Well, last week we heard the wisdom of the old guy, Moses, who has been God's man to bring God's people to the promised land. But the guy who leads them into the land is Joshua. Joshua and the army of Israel, with incredibly effective military strategy, conquer and then divide the land right up the middle through Jericho, Ai, and the Central Benjamin Plateau. Now, this is a big moment. There in the book of Joshua, Israel becomes a true nation with the three main ingredients that make up a nation, a people, a constitution, and now they have their land. They've arrived, but sadly they disobey again. Even though Joshua had conquered the Canaanites, the 12 tribes didn't fully remove them. And remember, God had called his people to be separate, set apart from the ways of the ungodly. And now, being influenced by the worldly Canaanites, the Jewish nation falls into a horrible cycle that happens seven times, each cycle getting progressively worse. First they sin, then they're enslaved. That leads to them crying out to God in supplication. God raises up a judge to save them from their oppression, but they slowly drift back into a lifestyle of complacent silence, ignoring their purpose, unity, and separation. The book of Judges summarizes this cyclical season for Israel by saying, everyone did what was right in his own eyes. It's a sad section of our Bible. And yet, we do know that God was at work calling people to himself, even in the midst of all that disobedience. Because the season of Judges is where the book of Ruth fits into the timeline the Moabite woman who God redeems and places into his redemptive line, making her the great grandmother of King David. But as we transition into the book of 1 Samuel, it does go from bad to worse. A combination of Eli, the high priest's wicked sons being totally corrupt, and Israel getting pounded by the Philistines, this new nation is left with no king, no capital, no priest, no land, and no theocracy. The people cry out for an earthly king, which was allowed, but the problem was they had wrong motives. They just wanted to look like other nations. They wanted a strong, burly guy, a worldly leader, a king after their heart. And as a consequence of their disobedience, God gave them what they wanted, Saul. Now, God's plans cannot be ultimately thwarted. And today, even while Saul still sits on the throne, we'll hear about the one God chose, the shepherd boy turned king, the man after God's own heart. 